So think about how much you've spent uh, in the game for, uh, for online play. I mean, I know you don't pay for an account, but you're paying through the nose hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. Uh, in some cases, for some people, tens of thousands of dollars <clears throat> in order to have all the goodies and play online. You're going to lose all of it. It is inevitable. It's all a question of when. Think about it. The game is not going to live forever. So eventually the game is going to end and with it all your stuff that you've spent all this money on. <clears throat> Secondly, you've got hacking and exploiting going on. This is a this is Yes, it's, it's a problem, and it's a problem that uh, everybody likes to blame on the user community, but really, if you think about it, the reason hacking and exploiting is going on is because of the quality or the workmanship of the software product itself. If people had built it properly, there would be nothing to exploit, there would be nothing to hack. Rather than addressing the problem that way, some companies choose to destroy or feed on their own community by banning them. So they fail in their coding task and they begin banning uh, their players who are actually spending money on the game. That has a long-term impact on the community as a whole as well because now you have less people running around buying recall scrolls and buying armor and buying things and you know just because somebody hacks or somebody exploits uh, doesn't mean they aren't buying things so i mean take for example how many players are macroing their crafting how many players are standing on a stone to kill a monster? It is ridiculous how, how common these kinds of problems are. But these are problems that the development team have created through poor planning and poor development. And now they're banning those people who, I mean, the, the people who are crafting through macros, they are buying tens of millions of resources because they are too lazy to mine it themselves. People who are standing on stones and, and killing mobs, they're doing that for resources as well. So they're going to end up going out and buying other resources so they can craft the things they want. So yeah, I mean, just because somebody exploits something or, or hacks in a certain area doesn't mean that they aren't playing normally in other areas. Finally, you've got a company who is so lost in the problems they've created that rather than addressing the problems themselves, they're addressing anybody speaking of or demonstrating the problem. In other words, it's censorship, it's marketing, it's hiding. So no matter how you slice it, you're going to lose your stuff. It's going away. <clears throat> it's all a matter of time. The, <clears throat> right now, I know of at least uh, three people in the community who are trying to sell their stuff off before there's not enough community left to sell their stuff, just so that they can get their money back. That's going on right now. And that tells you something about where the game is going. So, why do it? Why go online and, and pay all this money and buy all this crap that you're only going to lose. I think it's because you don't know any other way to do it. So I'm going to show you how to play the game offline. I'm going to show you how to hack it really simply so that you can have everything that you want. If you're a person who is in love with decorating, I mean, there are some people who don't care about the crafting, don't care about the fighting, they just love to decorate this stuff. I'm going to show you how to have enough gold to go and de buy what you want and decorate what you want, have houses from for, that you would normally have to buy online, have all the furnishings and everything. I'm going to show you how to do that. <clears throat> if you're in love with crafting 
and all you want to do is craft things, I'm going to show you how to have unlimited crafting XP and how to gather the resources, endless, I mean millions of resources in minutes so that you can do that on your own offline without paying a nickel to anybody. If you're into combat, I'm going to show you how to level all of your combat skills so that you no longer need a group of people to help you do anything. And yes, it costs a lot. I mean, we're talking probably five to six hundred million uh, uh, XP to get to a point where you're at least survivable in some areas. So I'm going to show you all of those things, and that's what this is all about. Here's my home. This is a, a, the Viking city home, I think, and I've got it on a castle lot. Yo-ho! So it gives you an idea <clears throat> just what's possible offline. I wouldn't be able... I, I mean, this home online would cost me in the range of $3,000. Uh, cold hard cash. Or an enormous amount of gold. And uh, I can't afford that. Uh, this item... This wall piece I, I just bought, it's the wrong wall piece. It wasn't what I intended at all, and I've got like 20 or 30 of them. Um, that kind of a mistake online would be very expensive and no way to return it. Here, I don't care, and I'm going to show you why. Right? But you can see I get to decorate and play with things, and I am not spending a nickel of my own money. Not a dime right? I'm wearing plate armor. It's founder plate armor. Didn't cost me anything. See? <clears throat> and I'm currently level 121, and I have, I have some skills maxed out to 110. And this character is, I think this is day four. It's like uh, uh, four days old, not even. And you can see I've completed some quests from the banners. So I'm going to show you how to be able to play the game without having to group with anybody anymore. I mean, let's face it. There's only two reasons we group. And that's A, because we can't do something by ourselves. And B, to earn XP faster. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those things in the offline game in, in no time. It's going to be really, really easy. <clears throat> then you can focus on grouping with your friends the way everybody groups otherwise, and that is on Discord. Worry about Discord and play offline, and that's going to save you a ton. I'm going to show you how to buy all that wonderful, you know, uh, uh, online store stuff right in game, where to get the kodos to do it, everything you need, all the gold you need, everything you need. I'm going to show you how to do it offline so that you never have to spend another nickel in the Portalarium store anymore. And I'm going to show you how playing offline can be as much fun, if not more fun, more fulfilling, offering greater challenges with a greater high when you achieve them than you're ever going to get in the online game. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do here is show you how to hack the offline game. No developer tools. No developer knowledge. You don't need to know squat about how to do anything developer-wise. You don't even need to download a tool. It's all on your Windows machine. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay? Keep in mind, uh, Portalarium doesn't want... Uh, anybody to get away with a hack of any kind and, and be public about it. So they'll get ticked off and, and ban you just because. Okay, even if you get online and say, ooh, the hack worked, they're going to ban you. They'll ban me for this video. You watch. Um, the second thing is we're going to be looking at the registry. I'm going to show you step by step where to look and how to look. But you're playing with the registry, so... Keep in mind that you mess up, it's your machine. You don't have to do what I'm going to show you to do. but uh, and, and be careful if you do. But um, 
you're you're on your you're, you're on your own as far as if something goes wrong i can't help you okay uh do it at your own risk so let's let's look at the character first of all um i will say this morning this character was level 32 he is currently level 97 woohoo two days ago he was level one now i i gained 30 levels the hard way I went up to like level 33 and then I said, screw this. And then an hour ago, I bumped him up to 47 and then I bumped him up again to 97 and I'm about to bump him up again. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But the other thing of interest here is his experience. Take a look at this experience pool, 973 million. And this is the second time I've topped it up. It was at 999 million, went down to 700 million, and I decided to top it back up again. And I've got like, you know, f this is focus. Take a look at this. Right. Tactics. So I've got 14 GMs in things. I'm working on this here. 140 in this. Look at that. Eh? I kill things before I've gotten anywhere near them. It's hilarious. I killed uh, a large grizzly bear at level 47 in uh, in deep Ravenwood. And, of course, that's, uh, that's too high for me. He was orange. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do the, the technique I'm going to show you is the same for uh, adventure experience. It's the same for crafting experience. It's the same for uh, producer level. And it's the same for adventurer level it's the same technique across the board okay uh while we're at it though I, I will share a funny little thing for you um one of the many bugs i mean the game is replete with them uh is you'll notice i'm wearing some gear here um i used a gold hack you can see my gold haha uh -huh. that'll it'll also show you how to do that uh, i used a gold hack to go buy all this great you know uh, uh, founder gear yahoo and it's all played and here's the funny thing if you have a brand new character with a uh, very low carrying capacity if you take your gear and put it in the bag you will be overweight but if you take that gear and put it back on the character you will not be overweight how's that for a bug that's it's just mind-boggling that nobody caught that that's the kind of mind-boggling simplistic bugs that that uh, we're hacking here uh i'm not even a good hacker <laughs> the really good hackers uh, uh nobody knows about okay so let's uh get on and show you this stuff here so this is regedit and the way you do it is you come down here you type here i'll just do it let me get rid of this you see regedit click it yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll launch. So let me open that up a bit bigger. Uh, scroll that out a bit there. So this is the chain of things. What you want to do is go to its computer. It's H key users. Then you're going to go to this fella here. Okay, go to software. I wonder if there's an easier way. Nah, it should be fine. Go to software. Scroll on down through software until you find Portalarium. Locate Shroud of the Avatar. Now, the reason why they did this, they're using a company called Mono, MonoDB. In the code, they're trying to obfuscate all the code uh, so that you can't see what they're doing. But they're also, this MonoDB is using your registry, one of the slowest access methods available on a, uh, in a computer programming language, as a database. You can see this is your, this is your uh, avatar database stuff, or uh, um, character stuff, objects in your house, uh, locations, whether you pay taxes on your lots, all that stuff is in here. Everything. Height, 
weight here somewhere? I don't know. I haven't looked at all of it. It's just so stupid. Can't imagine anybody would do this. But anyway, they did. What we're interested in is character sheet. Okay, so open that up. Not character sheet index, character sheet content. Pop that boy open. Now, I can't expand that window anymore, but so bear with me here. We have AE. That is Adventurer Experience. The number after it, up to the comma, is your Adventurer Experience. Now, Adventurer Experience is not the pool. Adventurer Experience is your level. So Adventurer Level. Uh, they call it Adventurer Experience, and they... Uh, put the level directly to that. So we can see here it's uh, it's uh, this big long ones or zeros or whatever. So if I take that number and I just make it all nines. I'm not going to make the number bigger or smaller. I'm just going to make it nines. And this is how much experience has been spent to gain that level. The next one of interest is PAE. This is Pool Adventurer Experience. And you'll see it's the 9729 blah 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 number. Let's see if I'm still running the game. And if I bring up my Adventurer Experience 973046. Let's take a look back. 972. Oh, okay. It's a little bit different. That must mean, if I bet you if I shut down and reloaded, I'd have this number. That's the number for the experience. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. Let me shut this down. Okay, 972. So I've changed this, the AE, to 999999. You notice it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's nine digits. And what I want, I need more digits. You can't really insert, or I don't want to tell you how to insert because that could mess with things in a bad way. So what I will say is just turn everything to nine, go into the game and kill something, anything that would give you just the tiniest bit of experience. Since you're 9999999, it'll flip it over to the next, giving you an additional digit, and then you can come back in and switch it all to nines again. So instead of, like for example, 999, go out and kill something, and now you have a 1000, you now you have an extra digit. Now you can turn that all into nine, so it's 9999. Go out and kill something. When you come back, it's 100 something. Now you have an extra digit, and you just keep doing that to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So you'll see here, I've just switched that to nines. Uh, my pool adventurer experience is nine seven. I'm going to make that nine nine nine. Okay, and this one here is your producer level experience. That's producer experience. And this PPA is pool producer experience. So that's your crafting experience. And you can see it's still 99999. All right. Okay, so to modify gold, we want to come out of the character sheet. And just a couple notches up there, you'll see gold index and gold content. We want to go in there. And here you can see the exact amount of gold that I have. So again, maybe you only have three digits of gold, 100, let's say, 100 gold. That's all you have. So you come in here and you change it to 999 gold. Now you go out and kill something, so you get some more gold. One more gold, doesn't matter. Now you have 1,000 and something gold. You have four digits. Go and change that to 9999. Then go back in. Go kill something else. Now you have five digits, and just keep doing that until you have as much gold as you want. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is through the infinite items hack, uh, and that's one I'll show you later on that allows you to get a million of everything every time you open a bag. So you open a, a loot bag, and every single item in the loot bag is a million. 
you know, a million gold. If you chop down a tree, it's a million maple logs. If you uh, if you mine an ore uh, node, it's a million ore nodes. It's a million of everything. I'll show you how to do that too. But that one requires some coding. Interesting thing about character sheet though is this character sheet actually does contain everything in the character sheet. It contains all the gear, actually more than that. It contains all the guys, all your character's gear. So for example, if you scroll up, it's all labeled. If you read carefully, you'll see it, right? This is the head. This is the item code for the, the headgear. We keep scrolling. This is the item code for the legs gear. If you look at a character that has, if you examine a character like this that has gear that you want, you get that code, you can use that same code and apply it to another character right in here. Easy peasy. All your tools are in here too. So if you look up, you've got milling tool and there's the code for it. Right hand, oh, his right hand armor, yeah, okay. Fishing tool and the code for it. All the items have item codes. And you can change that and it'll be whatever item you want. So again, this is a simple hack that you can do using registry. Once you're done, you just click OK and that's it. So now if I go back into my character. Okay, so we've logged back in here and let's take a look at what our level is now. 121. So you've seen how easy it is. Boom, 121. Just like that. And since we also updated my... Uh, why we didn't update it? Look, I guess I didn't save it. I must have canceled the change. Silly me. So there you have it. That is how you can hack gold. That is how you can hack pool experience for adventure, pool experience for crafting. That is how you can get everything you need to play this game entirely solo. So I haven't decorated this house. Let's go buy some crafting tables for it using Kodos. And this will show you how you can buy everything uh, that you would buy for the online game. You can get offline as well. I'm in Adoris. So I'm going to scoot over to Sequina Square. And let's hit into the bank right here. <clears throat> Upstairs. And we see the decoration lady. Kodos. Oh, you know what? They're not too expensive for me since I have 2.1 billion gold. So why don't we take a thousand of them? Boom. Warning, when you do this, you know, when you take a thousand Kodos, they're freaking heavy. So you're going to be encumbered. Let's go ahead and do that. A little bit of a lag there. And you can see I'm heavy. So I'm going to go to my um, my city house. I have houses all over the place and castles and keeps. I have a keep in Aerie and another one in Brittany. But just up there is my little city house for storing stuff. And I've got one where I keep all my Kodos. Hmm. There we go. Let's go see what we can buy with our Kodos. Don't bother closing games in the offline, closing doors in the offline version because nobody's 
going to invade your space. <clears throat> okay, is it this guy? I don't think it is this guy actually, but let's just see what things you can buy here. Of course, decoration naturally. Fireplaces and whatnot. All with Kodos, and of course, we have 500. More than enough. These are all the furnishings that they offer online for a price. Chess set. You can buy all of it. Different houses. Did you like the Alvin houses? Well, you can buy them all here. You don't have to pay cash online. Hmm, they don't have the crafting tables at this one. I don't think they have them here. It might be back where I was, the house decoration. <clears throat> this is where I bought my armor. As you can see, you can get harps, or no, that's a Cordovan lute and a harp. Yep. Things you normally have to pay cash for. It was at the bank I need to go. Let's go there. Here we go, cooking station. Let's give ourselves one of those. Oh, you only need gold for those, oh, that's easy. Gold's the least of my worries. What else have we got here? Why don't I just do this, station. Alchemy station, blacksmithing station, butchering, carpentry. Mill work, uh, smelting, tailoring, tanning. There we go. Nice. Now, I could go and buy all kinds of other stuff, but I really don't want to bore you that much. So let's go with that. And I'll just leave the Kodos at my new house as well. I've also forgotten to bind myself to the new lot, so I should go do that. Now, the, the loot hack that I showed before um, has many different benefits. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> of course, it's the millions and millions of gold, or billions in my case, of gold you can get just by opening a single loot. Um, but the second thing is for crafting. If you need, for example, recall scrolls to get back and forth to your home, um, you craft one and a billion show up, or a million, whatever you set it up for, show up in your bag. You never have to craft another recall scroll. Same with teleport scrolls, whatever. And then you can create as many offline characters as you like and position them all over the map so you can recall all over the place. It's far easier than actually playing the online version. And it is a hell of a lot cheaper.
mean, why spend all of that money on things in the game when you can just play it offline, hack the shit out of it, nobody's going to ban you for that, according to them, and uh, you're good to go. Look at this. So uh, it's a beautiful uh, scene here. Why don't I put my tables around here? Yes, that's what I'll do. So this has really been entirely about showing you how to use your hacked gold to buy your Kodos so that you can buy elven houses, viking houses, deeds, properties, whatever you want. All the decorations you like, the gear you like, every piece of gear I'm currently wearing is one that I bought with Kodos. This is to show you how to use your hack gold to get all of the things that you want in game while playing offline and not spending one red cent. Hey, so uh, we're going to go over uh, how to collect resources when you're soloing. Again, <clears throat> we're in Shrouds of the Avatar, we're offline. And uh, I'm going to show you how to collect resources, lots and lots of resources, when you're playing offline. Now, this stuff is stuff I used to do when I played online. Actually, I still do. I have, uh, I used to have 14 characters on there. Two of them just got banned. Um, <laughs> just because the GMs suspected something. Um, they still don't know what is going on. In any case, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to do this, <clears throat> or how, how, how it looks to have it done, and then I'll provide an email address, and you can email, uh, you can send me a, a little note to say that you're interested in the video that shows how to do this, and I'll be vetting those email addresses to make sure that the people who are seeing the actual video on how to do this aren't, you know, portalarium people who are only going to shut it off. So... <clears throat> I'm not speeding up the video in any way. You can see the water is moving normally, but I won't be moving normally. Ooh, bandit. Goodbye, bandit. Whoops, hello. As you can see, I've done this a few times. Now, I don't do the speed thing online, of course. Um, although nobody would really spot me moving around in private like that. But I haven't found it on, on, on uh, online. <clears throat> okay, let's, this is a good little spot here. It's very close. Because the other problem is, once I do this, well, you'll see. Okay, so my movement speed in here is, is, is back to normal. I haven't figured out how to hack the speed in a zone yet. So let's see, what's a good target? Well, look at this. We have sulfurous ash. Uh, we have trees. You know what, let's go after a tree. Because we know trees are, are a real bugger to uh, collect. A spider. Oh, there's a few spiders chasing me. Okay, chop down this tree and see what we get from it, shall we? Okay, so we have a million. Let's collect all that. And then I'll fight these things off. There we go. Oh, we got one more somewhere. Okay, now as you can see, <laughs> I'm a little encumbered. <laughs> so I have a million cinnamon bark, a million uh, pecan nuts, and a million pine wood. So let's unload this. 
Then we can come back and get some more <laughs> afterward. Good news is I can still fight. Oh goodness, I'm going the wrong way. Now this works for anything, and we have a rabbit corpse here, so let's, uh, if I can, skin it. We have a million rabbit. Yay. Or animal skins, anyway. So we don't have need of animal skins anymore. Now the trick to doing this in the online game is of course never to sell directly. Either use the resources yourself um, or sell the resources uh, to a resource seller like one of these online guys and let them do the selling. That way you don't draw attention to the fact that <laughs> You're gathering a million resources at a time. <laughs> In the offline version, we can be a lot more. Uh, well, we we can we can do it. Uh, we can be a lot more flamboyant about it, shall we say? As you can see, I don't have any encumbrance problems. In the online mode, or sorry, in the uh, overworld mode. Do they have a bank in there? I think they have a bank, don't they? So what I want is a bank. I think there is a bank in Owl's Head.
As you can see, I've been a little bit busy. And you can also see how fast you can um, you can gather resources. Now the thing to know here is <clears throat> don't play with the stacks, at least not with ore. It appears that they have used a signed 16-bit uh, variable to hold the stack uh, sizes and a signed 16-bit variable cannot go any higher than 32,767. Recognize the number. Now, keep in mind, again, I'm going to be providing an email address on the YouTube channel for you to send an email if you'd like to see how to do these more technical hacks. I'm not going to ask you to donate anything. I'm not going to ask you to pay anything. It's not about any of that. It's about showing people how to play offline. 